Conclusion, the International Science Radio Show. We have a bouncer and the doors of perception. <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly. It gets pretty exciting. The myths, the truths. <sighs> Toxicology, astro seismology, magnetism, the dark side, genetically engineered potatoes, planetoid, planetoid. I love that word. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Diffusion. Sit back and relax while we plant the seeds of weird and wonderful science directly into your fertile imagination. I'm Ian Wolfe. On this special holiday edition, the Ig Nobel Prizes are awarded each year by the Annals of Improbable Research by host Mark Abrams for science that first makes you laugh and then makes you think. You can see the full 2018 Ig Nobel Prize ceremony and read the Annals of Improbable Research at www.improbable.com. I will link them on the website. And now, the 2018 Ig Nobel Prizes condensed from two hours of ceremony down to 24 minutes. Be warned, one of the prizes covers an adult topic. We are gathered tonight to honor some remarkable individuals and groups. Every winner has done something that makes people laugh and then makes them think. The Ig Nobel Prize ceremony is produced by the Science Humor magazine, the Annals of Improbable Research, and proudly co-sponsored by the Harvard Radcliffe Society of Physics Students and the Harvard Radcliffe Science Fiction Association. The editors of the Annals of Improbable Research have chosen a theme for this year's ceremony, and that theme is the heart. Tonight, 10 prizes will be given. The achievements speak for themselves, all too eloquently. The prizes will be physically presented to the winners by Nobel laureates. As you know, we used to have a problem at this ceremony. Many of the speakers would exceed their allotted time. And here's how we now solve that problem. Please welcome the charming, delightful, ever so cute Miss Sweetie Pooh. Miss Sweetie Pooh is eight years old. Uh, Miss Sweetie Pooh, would you please demonstrate what you'll do when a speaker exceeds his or her allotted time? Please stop. I'm bored. Please stop. I'm bored. Thank you, Miss Sweetie Pooh. Now, Miss Sweetie Pooh. Thank you, Miss Sweetie Pooh. Miss Sweetie Pooh. It- Thank you, Miss Sweetie Pooh. Miss Sweetie Pooh. Thank you, Miss Sweetie Pooh. There are other important people up here. You'll meet them later. Our special thanks to two organizations who helped sponsor the ceremony, the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation and Abbott, the makers of the Heart Mate (laughs) Three Left Ventricular Assist system. Thank you also to Pepper Hamilton, LLP, Atlas Wines and Liquors, Red Bones, and Toscanini's Ice Cream. And a big thank you to our IG glorious ticket holders, and especially, especially to the improbable Donald Bruck. Thank you all. Now, let's get it over with, ladies and gentlemen, the awarding of the 2018 IG Nobel Prizes. The Medicine Prize. The Ig Nobel Prize. <laughs> the Ig Nobel Prize for Medicine. Is, the winners are from the United States of America, and the Ig Nobel Prize for Medicine this year is awarded to Mark Mitchell and David Wartinger for using roller coaster rides to try to hasten the passage of kidney stones. <laughs> On behalf of Dr. Mitchell and myself, thank you very much. We did, in fact, research riding on a roller coaster to help pass kidney stones. The real credit goes to one of my patients. (laughs) My patient went on spring break with his family to the Walt Disney World Resort to the Magic Kingdom and rode on a little roller coaster called the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad Roller Coaster. Now, He rode the ride, got off, and about two minutes later, passed a kidney stone. (laughs) 
He was so convinced that the riot had caused it that he got back in line and rode it a second time. <laughs> two minutes after his second ride, he gave birth to kidney stone number two. <laughs> He's feeling pretty cocky at this point, so he got back in line. Thank you very much. You can collect your $10 trillion bill from the Nobel laureates over there. The Anthropology Prize. The winners are from Sweden, Romania, Denmark, the Netherlands, Germany, the UK, Indonesia, and Italy. The Ig Nobel Prize for Anthropology is awarded to Thomas Persson, Gabriela Alina Sokyuk, and Eleni Madsen for collecting evidence in a zoo that chimpanzees imitate humans about as often and about as well as humans imitate chimpanzees. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, as you already heard, uh, the reason we stand here this evening is a study in which you observed spontaneous interactions between chimpanzees and visitors at Furovik Zoo in Sweden. Our goal was to see if the two ape species aped each other. Well, they did. Uh, at about 10% of all produced actions for each species, that is at a similar rate. But most importantly, we noticed that aping had the effect of prolonging cross-species interactions. So we concluded that it served a communicative purpose. And this social form of imitation has been claimed to be exclusively exclusive to humans. It can be seen, for example, uh, in how we play with very small children. But when it comes to, uh, to animals, imitation has almost only been thought of as a way of learning new skills. Our results, however, suggest that indeed of a instead of a mechanism for learning new actions, perhaps the ability to imitate evolved primarily as a form of communication, having a social function first. <laughs> the Biology Prize. The winners are from Sweden, Colombia, Germany, France, and Switzerland. The Ig Nobel Prize for Biology is awarded to Paul Becker, Sebastian Le Breton, Erica Wallen, Eric Hedenstrom, Felipe Barrero Escaveri, Marie Bengtsson, Volker Jorger, and Peter Witzgal for demonstrating that wine experts can reliably identify by smell the presence of a single fly in a glass of wine. Thank you very much for awarding us. So since thousands of years do humans live together with Drosophila fruit flies which are attracted to our food and to our wine. We found that females of Drosophila melanogaster, they produce a pheromone that attracts their mates. Humans are extremely sensitive to this compound. We smell it at really small amounts. So if a female fly is attracted to your glass of wine and drops in, that's very sad for the fly because the fly will drown. But it's also sad for you because the pheromone will spoil your wine. Yet we do not know why our nose has detectors to sense a fly pheromone, but we are sure it's not to attract us to flies. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The Chemistry Prize. The winners are from Portugal. The Ig Nobel Prize for Chemistry is awarded to Paula Romao, Adelia Alarco, and the late Cesar Viana for measuring the degree to which human saliva is a good cleaning agent for dirty surfaces. <laughs> the winners were not able to attend tonight's ceremony, but they sent this brief video acceptance speech. On behalf of my mentor, Dr. Adilia Lercão, and myself, I would like to thank the IG Nobel <laughs> Board of Governors for considering our work. And also, I know that 
it seems quite improbable, but human saliva is indeed an effective cleaning agent <laughs> for surface, surfaces like paintings, sculptures or gilded. But don't try to use it in your kitchen counters. Thank you and have a nice evening. Bye. Here with a special tribute to the winners is the research curator of the Harvard Art Museum's Conservation and Technical Studies program, Francesca Bever. Good evening. Yes, conservators and restorers have and do use spit routinely for cleaning artworks, and I will demonstrate this shortly. The enzymes in saliva are readily available and free and environmentally friendly. So this study is a wonderful example of scientific research used to validate long-standing traditional practices. And I should say that I've often wondered whether there is some, um, whether what is in one's meal might affect the effect of the, for example, if one is having a garlic-rich lunch. So maybe that's the next step for research. Congratulations to the winners and thank you. Thank you very much. The Medical Education Prize. The winner is from Japan. The Ig Nobel Prize for Medical Education is awarded to Akira Horiuchi for the medical report, Colonoscopy in the Sitting Position. <laughs> Lessons learned from self-colonoscopy. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to receive this uh, prize. So, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to appreciate Endoscope and the Japanese Endoscope Company. So, I just uh, uh, did self colonoscopy uh, at a sitting position using a, a, a small caliber colonoscope. So using our left, uh, left hand and uh, uh, manipulate, and uh, right hand put into the uh, <laughs> colon, okay? I think uh, this trial may be funny, but uh, I learned uh, many things. <laughs> anyway, please, uh, people, have a screening colonoscopy. So, Thank you very much. Thank you. Put this back out. Here. Okay, you can collect your ten trillion dollar bill from the Nobel laureates over there. You're listening to the Ig Nobel Prizes on Diffusion Science Radio. Send emails to science at diffusionradio.com. We're brought to you across Australia on the Community Radio Network and podcast over the internet on www.diffusionradio.com. The Literature Prize! The winners are from Australia, El Salvador and the UK. The Ig Nobel Prize for Literature is awarded to Thea Blackler, Rafael Gomez, Vesna Popovich and M. Helen Thompson for documenting that most people who use complicated products do not read the instruction manual. Thank you. We did survey studies, four of them, and two longitudinal studies, and found that most people do not read manuals most of the time. And most people do not use all the features on many of their products. Also, extraneous features have a negative effect on their experience with the product, and reading manuals or accessing online help was sometimes such a bad experience that people would avoid doing it even when they knew they were using the product wrongly and reading a manual would probably help. <laughs> so life is too short to RTFM. <laughs> You might say that's not unexpected, and it makes you laugh, and we all knew that. 
but manufacturers and designers don't appear to know that. They've been adding more and more features to everything from phones and ovens to software to toys and continuing to ship products with manuals or expecting us to access help online. So how can we fix it? You can read my book and that will teach you how to fix it. Thank you to everybody. Please follow the instructions for collecting your $10 trillion bill from the Nobel laureates. The Nutrition Prize. The winner is from the United Kingdom. The Ig Nobel Prize for Nutrition is awarded to James Cole for calculating that the caloric intake from a human cannibalism diet is significantly lower than the caloric intake from most other traditional meat diets. <laughs> I'll have to find my speech now. Why don't you chew on something while I find us some food for thought? Okay. And to continue the puns, I really like research I can get my teeth into. Um, as with most uh, scientific research, there's always a kind of bigger picture behind what we're trying to understand. And for me, I'm really trying to think about um, the behavioral complexities of our human ancestors like the Neanderthals. So we know that in modern humans, there's a whole range of motivations for cannibalism, from survival to warfare. Um, but, you know, perhaps in others, it's, there's perhaps more than just meat for meat's sake. Uh, it turns out, calorifically, we're not uh, that nutritious compared to a horse or a bison or a mammoth, uh, which we know that were successfully hunted in the past. And we know that Neanderthals are increasingly more complex. They produce art, they have symbolism, jewelry, uh, language, and complex societies. So uh, final food for thought is that perhaps we should um, consider that our ancestors had a greater complex attitude to cannibalism in the way that we do. Because if we can gain greater understanding into them, we can gain greater understanding into ourselves. And isn't that what science is about and why we're all here? So thanks very much. You can collect your $10 trillion bill. The Peace Prize. The winners. The winners are from Spain and Colombia. The Ig Nobel Prize for Peace is awarded to Francisco Alonso, Cristina Esteban, Andrea Sergei, Maria Luisa Balesta, Jaime San Martin, Constanza Calatayud, and Beatriz Alomar for measuring the frequency, motivation, and effects of shouting and cursing while driving an automobile. <laughs> Thank you very much. According to the World Health Organization, 1.23 million people worldwide die each year because of a traffic accident. Let us consider that shooting and insulting, in addition to causing accidents, can constitute the first stage of a war, which may lead to physical aggression that could, in some occasion, have terrible consequences. Let's also remember that people use cars to make love as well, <laughs> which is clear better than eventually using them to get a skillet. <laughs> and it happens with this prize, we need to support Lauth, Lauthers, because they are not compatible with certain negative emotional states. And for sure, with they will lead us to peace. We need to be at peace with ourselves in order not to be at war with everyone else. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm the, I'm the peace, the peace novel. I can shoot you, I can insult you. I can! Okay. Thank you.
Don't forget to collect your $10 trillion, please. The Reproductive Medicine Prize. The winners represent the USA, Japan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, India, and Bangladesh. The Ig Nobel Prize for Reproductive Medicine is awarded to John Barry, Bruce Blank, and Michelle Boileau for using postage stamps to test whether the male sexual organ is functioning properly as described in their study, Nocturnal Penile Tumescence Monitoring with Stamps. We sought to answer Bugs Bunny's recurrent question. What's up, Doc? <laughs> when physically normal men sleep and dream, they have complete erections one to five times a night. Physically impotent men don't. In hospital, mercury strain gauge penile plethysmography was the standard method to measure nocturnal penile tumescence in 1978. <laughs> we developed an inexpensive stamp test to demonstrate the absence of sleep erections. And here we are, 40 years later, on the campus of Harvard University, telling you all about it. By the way, the answer to Bugs Bunny's question is... And what was the question? What's up, Doc? Our time. And now the final prize, the Economics Prize. The winners are from Canada, China, Singapore, and the USA. The Ig Nobel Prize for Economics is awarded to Lindy Hanyu Liang, Douglas Brown, Hui Wen Lian, Samuel Hanig, D. Lance Ferris, and Lisa Keeping for investigating whether it is effective for employees to use voodoo dolls <laughs> to retaliate against abusive bosses. Thank you. It's a great honor to be here receiving this prestigious award, especially after our paper has been characterized by the press as bizarre and absurd. <laughs> so in our work, we wanted to understand why people keep retaliating against their abusive bosses. And we presented them with a voodoo doll and to see like, whether stabbing a voodoo doll make them feel they've retaliated. And people actually feel a lot better. They feel their sense of justice have been restored. <laughs> So I really want to take this opportunity to thank my former boss. <laughs> this guy right here. For teaching me everything about how to deal with abusive bosses. And I really want to acknowledge my cats. Caramel and Kit Kat for providing me Please with all the emotional stop. support. Okay. My cats don't Please interest you? Stop. Okay. Don't forget to collect your $10 trillion from over there. And now, Professor Jean. Burko Gleason will deliver the traditional Ig Nobel goodbye, goodbye speech. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Please remember this final thought. If you did not win an Ig Nobel Prize this year, and especially if you did, Better luck next year. Thank you. Good night. And that's all from us this year on Diffusion. 
Would you like to hear your voice on radio? Record a voice memo on your phone or use the voicemail tab on the website. We need more people contributing stories to Diffusion. Send your contribution, opinions, helpful suggestions and donations to science at diffusionradio.com. That's science at diffusionradio.com. Please do send me an email with a question I can answer on the show. Please rate us on iTunes. Tell your friends. Follow me on Twitter at Ian Wolf. Sound checking by Charles Willock. I produce Diffusion, which is broadcast around Australia to 28 stations on the community radio network, including 2RBM in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales, 8 C in Alice Springs and Tennant Creek, 2 NVR in Nambucca Valley, 3 MBR in the Mallee Border Districts of Victoria and South Australia, City Park Radio 7LTN in Launceston, Tasmania, 2XXFM in Canberra, and my local station 2RDJ in Burwood, New South Wales. Diffusion is syndicated globally on the National Science Foundation's Science360 internet radio station and also on astronomy.fm. Subscribe to our podcast on the Diffusion website, www.diffusionradio.com. That's www.diffusionradio.com. If you enjoyed the show, you can explore more than 950 previous episodes archived on diffusionradio.com, where the shows are labelled by keywords so you can focus in on the stories you want to hear. Join my patrons at patreon.com slash diffusionradio, make a donation through paypal.me slash ianwolf, or listen to Diffusion on your phone or tablet through the Radio Public app. Subscribe to the Diffusion YouTube channel at youtube.com slash c slash diffusionradio. I'm Ian Wolfe. Join us inside your audio device of choice for more science wondering next week on Diffusion Science Radio. Science is fun. It helps you to learn, to know, and to appreciate. When you study science, you may go on field trips. You discover the marvelous interrelationships between all living things. You learn to read the history of the earth as it is written in rocks and fossils. You find out what makes things tick. Everything from a molecule to a living organism. In the study of science is found the most useful and satisfying knowledge of man. Knowledge of his physical world, its past, its present, and its future. And in your moments of relaxation, now and in the years to come, you will find the study of science leading you into fascinating pursuits. Photography. Collecting. Why study science? Study science because you will find in the study of science a richer, more rewarding life.